Hey YouTube, it's Charlie from Read and Trained Writer, and today I wanted to share the books that I read in July. I do try to keep my reviews short and simple so that we can get through the books quickly but still give you an idea of what I thought of each of them, and also share kind of the what sets each book apart that I read. I read 12 books, so I will jump right into my bullet journal now and share those with you. I'll start with my favorite books of the month. I have What the Wind Knows by Amy Harmon, Hum If You Don't Know the Words by Bianca Morais, and 19 Minutes by Jodi Picoult. They were all fabulous reads that I would highly recommend. Now I'll jump into the books that I read just in the order that I read them in. The first book I read was Pretty Little Liars by Sarah Shepard, and I rated this four stars. This is a YA thriller following a group of five friends. Their ringleader, Allison, knows all their dirty secrets, but when they are young, she disappears. A few years later, they start getting notes about their secrets, signed A. Is it really Allison? This book was fairly enjoyable for a fluff read, but I was disappointed after reading The Perfectionists by the same author, which I liked a lot more. This book was more fluffy, had more sexual content, and the characters were all pretty messed up and not very good people. While it was an okay read, I won't be continuing the series. Instead, I just looked up the ending and the spoilers online. I also read 19 Minutes by Jodi Picoult, and I rated this four stars. This book follows a school shooting, looking at the events leading up to it and the key players in the aftermath. I found this to be very enjoyable and thought-provoking. It follows a lot of characters and goes back and forth between present and past very often, which made it hard to keep track of everything at first. Once I got used to it though, I couldn't put the book down and it really made me think. One of its strengths is the way it looks at a lot of different sides of the situation. The one perspective we don't get to understand, which disappointed me, was the bully of the school. But we do get to see a lot of other perspectives and that was interesting. Next was Snapshot by Brandon Sanderson, and I rated this five stars. This was a reread for me. My husband and I listened to it together on a car trip. It's about a three-hour audiobook because it's a novella. It is a sci-fi detective story. Society can create a snapshot or exact replica of a day, but when you send people into that snapshot, it changes things just in that snapshot, not in real life. They send in a couple of detectives when a crime is committed who do their best not to mess up the snapshot while also getting the information or proof that they need. The first time I read this, I didn't really like it as much. The second time though, I enjoyed it more. It's a really interesting story and I hope he writes more in this world and makes this into a series. Then I reread the Hunger Games series. So I rated the Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins five stars. I reread the trilogy in preparation for the newly released prequel. I hadn't read this since high school, so I had no idea if I would actually like it or not, but ends up, I still love it. Suzanne Collins does a fabulous job with tension, characters, world building, and foreshadowing. I have a more in-depth review from the perspective of a writer looking at kind of the craft of the book that I will link down below. Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins, I rated four stars. I didn't love Catching Fire in high school. It felt too much like a repeat of the first to me at the time. This time around, I was able to appreciate and notice the focus on politics and the rebellion more, and I enjoyed it more this time around because of that. I bumped up my rating by one star. I also bumped up my rating of Mockingjay by one star, bringing it to three stars. As a teenager, I actually hated this book. I felt depressed while reading it. I hated what she, what Collins did to my favorite characters, and I left feeling dissatisfied with the ending, despite Katniss ending up with who I wanted her to in the love triangle. I still don't love the book, but I can appreciate the direction Collins went with it, even if it's not for me. I would love to hear, if you enjoyed the third book, what you liked about it in the comments below. Then I listened to Someday Maybe by Colleen Hoover, and I rated this two stars. This was my main audiobook read of the month. I generally like contemporary romance, and I've heard good things about Colleen Hoover. I honestly didn't like the book at all, though I did feel a pull to keep reading, which is why it's two stars and not one. We follow two protagonists, a girl named Sydney who finds out that her roommate and boyfriend have been cheating on her for two years, and a boy named Ridge who rescues Sydney when she has no place else to go. Then, of course, they try not to fall in love because he has an awesome girlfriend, while spending massive amounts of time alone together, including in his bedroom, on his bed. 
This book just annoyed me. You can find a more in-depth review on Goodreads if you're interested, but basically it annoyed me because they kept trying not to be attracted to each other or act on that attraction, but then kept putting themselves in situations where it was hard or even impossible to do that. And then they would be like, well, we're just trying our hardest. And I'm like, no, you're not. And then they end up cheating together emotionally. No, they never actually sleep together while he's dating someone else, but he shares stories and personal things with Sydney that he's never told anyone, not even his girlfriend. And they do kiss and don't tell the girlfriend and all this stuff. And I was so annoyed because the thing is, you don't, you don't try to stop yourself in a situation like that from being attracted to someone or acting on that attraction. You just don't put yourself in that situation if you're actually committed to someone else. And it annoyed me so much. And it took up 90% of the storyline. And the more it went on, the more it frustrated me. And I'm just going to stop now before it turns into more of a rant. The next book I read was much better. I finished The Return of Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Conan Doyle, and I rated it four stars. This was the next short story collection in the Sherlock Holmes series, and I really enjoyed it. I tend to really like the short story collections. They are interesting and don't have a lot of unnecessary explanation at the end, like some of the novels. I usually just read one story a day when I'm reading a collection like this. And then I read Hum If You Don't Know the Words by Bianca Maurice, and I rated this five stars. This was a story set in Africa during the Soweto Uprising. It follows an African lady looking for her daughter and a white child who loses her parents. I am so glad I read this. It was so touching. It helped me think about and understand people different from me and taught me an amazing lesson about love and friendships. I would highly recommend this to anyone who enjoys historical fiction. My nonfiction book for the month was Bonds That Make Us Free by C. Terry Warner, and I rated this four stars. It is a self-help type book, though it's pretty different from most that I've read. The main idea is that the way we see other people influences the way we feel about them, and hence the way that we treat them. That then affects the way that they act. The way we see and feel about them is something that we are more in control of than we tend to think. I didn't necessarily love the book. It felt a little long-winded, and I didn't agree with the way that he talked about certain ideas, but I still felt this book is a must read. The ideas in the book are life changing and it's honestly been a very humbling experience to realize how often I am in the wrong and to realize that I have more to repent of each day than I recognized before. Then I finally got to The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins and I rated this 3.5 stars. This is the prequel for The Hunger Games. I honestly went into this thinking that I wouldn't like it very much, but it surprised me. I enjoyed learning some of the history that we know from the original trilogy, and I actually loved learning about Snow's character. He was interesting to read about because he's never really good, but he doesn't really start off as bad either. My favorite part was seeing how the Hunger Games that we knew in the trilogy began, and how they became what they are when we are first introduced to them in The Hunger Games. I did feel it slowed down a bit around two-thirds of the way through, but then it picked up again. Besides being a little long, it was a fun read and I would recommend it to anyone who liked the original trilogy. I would also recommend reading the trilogy again before picking this up if it's been a while. I am really glad that I did that. And my comic book for the month was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Change is Constant by Kevin Eastman. I think this is the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic, and I rated it five stars. I've never been into comic books, and I don't actually think I ever read a single one before I like even found book two. But last year I did a Marvel movie marathon, and it got me interested in reading some of the comics. So I got some recommendations from my brother, who knows me really well and reads a lot of comics. I've been trying some different ones, and so far this has been my favorite. I really liked the artwork. I liked how it looked and it was easy to follow what was going on. And that's really important to me because some artwork in comic books is really hard to tell who's who or what's happening. I loved the plotline. It, it was familiar to me, but I was still interested in it. I also felt like it flowed really well and that they didn't do a lot of telling. They showed things very well throughout the comic book. And I finished off the month really strong with What the Wind Knows by Amy Harmon, and I gave this five stars. This is a historical romance set in Ireland in the 1920s. It has time travel and romance and a lot of history that I didn't know very much about before. I love Ireland though. I did Irish step dancing all growing up 
and this reawakened my desire to visit there someday and just to learn more about Irish history. It took me a little bit to get into the story, but I'm really glad I persevered. I cried and laughed and I was totally sucked into the story. I cared so much about the characters and I loved the ending. And I loved the romance in it. The plot was a little bit predictable, but that didn't detract at all from my enjoyment of the overall story. If you enjoy historical romance, this is one that I can't recommend enough. So there are the 13 books that I read in July and what I thought about them. What books did you read in July? What was your favorite read? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe for lots of writing content. Thank you so much for watching my video. I will see you in the next one.